Welcome to Rising Tide Startups, where today's most exciting startup founders share their stories and strategies. They also deliver tangible lessons learned along the way that you can apply to your own startup. Each episode is a true masterclass. Make sure you take notes. Take it away, Kevin. This is Kevin Pruitt with another episode of Rising Tide Startups, and my special guest today is Rupal Patel. Rupal, thanks for joining us this morning on Rising Tide. It's a pleasure to be here, Kevin. I guess this, I say this morning, it's afternoon for you because she's calling in from London, England. Yeah. So Rupal, thanks again. And uh, so I, I have started asking this question in the last probably 20 episodes or so. I used to ask just, you know, tell us about yourself. And I thought yeah. that was just too commonplace. So I, I wanted to change it up a little bit. And I'd ask people, okay, if, if we were at a networking event, a business networking event, how would you introduce yourself? But I'm a little afraid today because I think this is my first guest in 250 episodes that might answer me if I told you I'd have to kill you <laughs> based on her, her background. But I'm going to take the chance and ask you anyway, if, you, if we met at a networking event, how would you introduce yourself? Well, I wouldn't kill you, Kevin. So you can breathe a sigh of relief there. But I am a former CIA officer um, and now a sitting CEO, business advisor, consultant, author, and executive coach. So Okay. Can we narrow down a little bit? I mean, it's like, what do you do in your spare time? I mean, <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> that. so there are many different titles for effectively doing the same thing, which is just working with high performers, founders, executives, leaders of all kinds, and helping them cut through the noise. As you yourself know, as you're, you know, being a business owner yourself, there's just so much crying out for our attention, so many fires mm. that need to be put out. And I think so many leaders or leaders in the making get overwhelmed. And so it's really just helping them cut through all of that, get to the core, the essence of what the problems are, or what the challenges are, or what their values are, and what they really, really want to focus on, and helping them get laser focused on that, and then coming up with a very tactical, bringing in some of my CIA yeah. skills there, a very tactical plan for achieving whatever it is that they want to achieve and make sure that they don't get sidetracked or um, or stopped on the way of pursuing their ambitions. So this is not the typical career path of a CIA agent. So I don't I, think so. <laughs> what was the like, take, take us back to kind of that transitional moment that you said, sure. you just woke up one day and said, okay, I, I'm no longer doing this and I'm going to shift to this new, new endeavor. What was that spark or that, that transitional, I guess, catalyst? Yeah. Um, so you're right. It's not an obvious trajectory. I am definitely one of those people who always likes to challenge myself and who always likes to test myself and see what, you know, what I can do in, in totally un unknown environments. And so I'd been working for the agency for about five or six years when I started to feel that itch that, oh, you know, I've done some really amazing things. I served in war zones. I briefed four-star generals and presidents and, you know, all sorts of things. And I was really starting to, I wasn't desperate to leave because it was a great place and it was mm -hmm. a fantastic career, but I just started looking around and I thought, oh, you know, what, what could be next for me? I could happily stay here and, you know, join the ranks of the CIA leadership, but I didn't want to get comfortable. And I want, so I just started looking around and I thought, well, you know what, the world of the private sector and, you know, where people are really making an impact and changing the world mm -hmm. are, are people who are in, you know, or in, in certain ways who have their own businesses. And um, so I started exploring, you know, the world of, well, the private sector really in all of its many facets. And so because I love to learn, I decided that a good way of making that transition from the CIA and the world of, of intelligence into the private sector was to get an MBA. So initially, I moved to London to get my MBA. And during that time, just started thinking about all the different ideas that I could of businesses that I, I could potentially start. I had a whole note, well, multiple notebooks full of ideas. <laughs> um, and then just took the plunge and actually and chose the first business I started, uh, and I still am the CEO of is a real estate investment and development business. So here in the UK, that's building homes and um, you know, uh, building rental accommodation as well as homes for people to buy. And the whole ethos of that is, you know, building and, and providing inspirational and aspirational homes. But like I said, I'm not one who likes to just get comfortable. And so while I was building that business, I found a lot of other 
leaders, founders, people who were interested in making a big career change were naturally coming to me or finding me and uh, either at networking events or right. just, you know, in, in the, in the world. Um, and I started informally giving them advice and coaching and mentoring and then more formally doing it. And so then it evolved into effectively now, which is what I was saying is sort of an advisory consultancy business, um, as well as providing coaching and, and, and writing books and, and speaking on stages around the world. So how did you pick real estate? So, I mean, when people <laughs> yeah. think about real estate, I mean, we're in a really unique time in the States, you know, with kind of a housing of, like scarcity. There's a lot more yeah. buyers than, than property to buy and yeah, you know, yeah, it's same here. prices to go up. The UK has almost been that way for years. So, yeah. I mean, they've been, it, it's been a, a unique, you know, it's hard for to get sure. on the, as the, the property ladder as the, as yeah. the Brits would say. So yeah. how did, why, why that particular industry? What was the, yeah. what was the draw for you? There were a couple of things actually. So first it was, it's really tangible, you know, coming from a very knowledge-based economy and career. Um, I loved the idea of being able to see and touch and feel the fruits of my labor. It wasn't, you know, a briefing or anything intangible. It was something hard uh, and, and also something that you could transform something unloved and horrible into something beautiful and amazing. And, you know, philosophy and sort of values are really, really important to me. And fundamentally in the UK and perhaps, you know, even back at home, there just wasn't and still isn't to a large extent, really good quality homes for people to either rent right. or buy. And we wanted to be a part of this solution instead of complaining about the problem. And so, as you said, the UK is still has a massive housing shortage and we wanted to contribute to, yeah, to, like I said, to being a part of the solution. So it was those things that matched my values. It's very tangible. I also have a very strong creative side. So it was mm -hmm. nice to be able to use that creativity in a very tangible way. Um, and, and yeah, and that's why, you know, it, I, I figured start with one thing. Yes, you can have a million ideas, but I guess relevant for your audience, many entrepreneurs, you know, are not um, ever short of ideas. But the problem is choosing the one to focus on, because that's how you will obviously eventually get success. And so I, you know, I let myself go through that process of having lots of ideas, but then just chose one and stuck with it until, you know, until I was able to build it to a place where it effectively now runs itself with relatively, you know, little intervention for me. And it allowed me to then evolve and, and, and open up a whole other business, which is, you know, something that I'm really, really passionate about. And, and like I said, helping other people. Well, I want to, I want to dig into that uh, kind of the, the, the tertiary, I guess, arteries that, that yeah. you know, that came out of the real estate idea. Yeah. But I, I think you've got another business idea that's kind of latent, you know, you need to kind of unleash you, you, you need to take that notebook of your 10,000 ideas and the people <laughs> that you're you're mentoring or the people yeah. that are saying, Hey, I want to kind of look, grow in this space. You need to say, Hey, you know, Hey, here's a, here's ideas. Take, take this and take run them and it. go. Yeah. You know, for and, sure. I, and let me mentor you in that kind of initial stage. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to fill your schedule. This probably over already has 27 hours in a 24 hour <laughs> day. So it, it, it would be an interesting, interesting approach, but I am, uh, I, I really want to kind of look back at, and it seems like that this has been kind of a, you know, they talk about the the hockey stick, you know, up yes. and to the right growth. I mean, your personal brand has just exploded, mm -hmm. you know, in a relatively short period of time. How much of that would you attribute to the uniqueness of your story? You know, you say I'm um, former yeah. CIA agent. That's a, that's a that's a really unique history. But I also yeah. think that you have. I mean, you've got so much energy and you bring so much to the table that, I mean, it's just like the perfect storm. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I feel like for me, I've been a quote unquote overnight success, but it took 10 years to get there, you sure. know, and so it, it almost um, always does. <laughs> and well, exactly. And I think that's the amazing thing is when you're going through it, you don't, you forget that you've made as much progress as you have because it, you're going through it in the moment and it feels like it's taking forever. And, um, but yeah, you know, it's also something that I consciously chose to work on is, mm -hmm. you know, I got over all of my hangups about being visible, about telling people I used to work at the CIA about, you know, putting myself out there and slowly, um, yeah, inching a toe into, into the, the spotlight as it were. And, you know, there's for the longest time, you know, I was to put it uh, in a, in a nice way, I was sort of hiding my light under a bushel, right? Mm -hmm, and and I yeah. felt like my story wasn't special. It wasn't unique. There was nothing particularly interesting because it was mine. And I think so many of us 
take for granted what is ours and we think that oh well if I'm good at something then everybody must be good at something and we we don't realize what is actually unique and special so to be honest it's, it seems obvious now but it was definitely a process of me just getting comfortable with the idea that oh wait there is something unique here there is mm, something special yeah. here and yes you're right not everybody makes the transition from working at the CIA to becoming a CEO and um and it was it took a lot of um, just reflection, I guess, as well as work to to start building a brand that was both authentic, but one that I felt comfortable sharing at the time that I was sharing it. So nobody, you know, for ages, people were like, oh, but you should do this and you should do that. And you should, you know, tell everybody what you did at the agency and make this your thing and make that your thing. But it just didn't feel right. And mm-hmm. so I had to wait until it felt right for me um, and then do it in my way and, yep. and not, you know, sort of follow any templates or, or other people's sort of best practices. Right. I mean, as you were talking, I was just thinking that, you know, you, you, this word authenticity is thrown around. So I think so lightly yes. sometimes, and, <laughs> yes. but I mean, the, I love the way that you kind of circled back and, and you really kind of gave it some, you know, put some meat on the bones, so to speak about how it applies to you, because yeah. truly authenticity is like, is just revealing who we are yeah. and telling our story in the way that that is truthful and natural to us. Correct. And it's not like I'm trying to fit, fit into a template. I'm not trying to, you know, create a persona that is not real. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the, that'd be the antithesis of, of authenticity. Exactly. <laughs> you know? So exactly. um, if uh, this is not with none of the prep information that I sent you is going to include this question, because you just said something really interesting. And I did that's warn okay. you. I said I could chase proverbial. Rabbits. Go for it. I and love but, rabbits. I, I want you to just take a second and just speak to our audience and let's circle back just a little bit when you were talking about that. If they are just assume they're further behind you on the on the journey, they're sitting in a cubicle somewhere just thinking about, you know, trying to launch something or they've got some ideas in a notebook, they on a you know, cocktail napkin, whatever it is. If you're speaking to them, walk them through the journey that you went through, just briefly. Walk them through the journey you went through to really find your voice. Uh, how do they, how did they find their voice? Gosh. So they have to be prepared for it to be a journey. Um, and like I said, for me, it was one of those, it was probably a lifelong process to be honest. Mm. Um, but one that I, I consciously focused on for the better part of the past, probably just five years, not even that long. Um, and so as far as sort of practical tips for how do you find your voice? I think a great way of doing it is just asking yourself, and away from the noise of other people's ideas or social media or what we think we should do and all of, you know, again, all of that stuff that bombards us. And just ask yourself some very honest questions. One, what's important to you? So, you know, mm. is it family? Is it work? Is it money? Is it all of those things? But again, without any judgment, without predetermining what other people would think if you said this to them, just first and foremost, what is important to you? When I answer that question for myself, Learning and contribution were always on that list in some way, shape, or form. I love to learn. Our world is an amazing place. Humans are amazing. And 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 not and for me, yes, learning for learning's sake, but then also adding that element of contribution where it's like, okay, well, if I learn something, if I develop an expertise in something, both through knowledge and experience, I want to share it with other people and contribute to the world because I want to help people. So those were really fundamental values for me. And, and that, again, was something that if you looked back on my life and my career choices were very evident in what mm-hmm. I did and how I chose to invest my time. But it wasn't anything that I consciously thought of and then took the extra step of consciously designing into my life. And so, you know, again, very practically for those who are trying to find their voice, what do you value both by what you do um, or what you would like to do? And then once you know what that is, how can you very practically start building that into your day-to-day life now, not waiting for some magical point in the future? And again, for me, learning and contribution, well, as I was building my business and learning all about the world of being a founder and, you know, all of the the mechanics of that, I wrote a blog. And at first I didn't share it with anyone, but (laughs) it was just a way for me to get my thoughts out into the world. And then I started sharing it widely. And then I started speaking at events. And again, all of these things build on themselves in a way that felt natural to me and that I was happy with, et cetera. But, but, but I, I I very consciously found ways to do the things that I love, that I value, that are important to me in the day-to-day moment while I was still doing, you know, the, the running and, and starting of a business. 
Yeah, that that is. I mean, it's, it's very evident, even even in this short period of time that we've been talking on this on this podcast. I mean, just uh, there's so much wrapped up in in the things that you say, and there's so much depth in the, your answers. That mm-hmm. I mean, this is not something that's been you know. You, you I read this in a book, and I kind of adopted it as my own mantra, you know, so to speak. I mean, this, <laughs> no. is, this is this is life lived and, yeah. and expressing itself through your through your own story. But yeah, so talk us a bit. Tell us a little bit about you know just current business status, you know, yeah. what all are you, what do you have your hands in right now? What's the, you know, what's really working well, what's, what's some challenges you're facing right now? Uh, so right now I'm doing tons and tons and tons of work around my book, which is coming out on May 26th, which is Tell super exciting title. for me. What's the title so here? The title is from CIA to CEO and Love literally it. just Today, I got my author copies in the post. So today is a very special day for lots of reasons, Kevin. Um, <laughs> so yeah, from CIA to CEO, uh, I'm, you know, I, it's been, I will say, it, even though it's cheesy, but it has been an absolute labor of love for me. The writing process of distilling my thoughts of that intellectual challenge and then finding a way to make it relevant and, and helpful and useful and practical right. for, for re- readers has been so fulfilling. So I'm doing everything I possibly can to make this book as uh, or get it in front of as many readers as I possibly can, just because I know it will help people. And that was my intention is to write it. Yes, it's a business book, but it's also a life book. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. And it's been great. So I'm focusing a lot on that. Uh, I'm doing a lot of events and and workshops for for big companies and organizations uh, and speaking engagements. I'm I'm flying to to Cyprus in September to do an event and a couple of other things going on in Scotland and other places. So um, just honing my craft and sharing hopefully what are really insightful and practical and helpful um, tips and lessons and tools with, uh, with everybody I possibly can. So when you're in Cyprus, you need to go up in the Trotos mountains and the little villages have these little cantinas or whatever they would be called in Cyprus. It just unbelievable food. The Greek Done. food is, is great. It's a, that's a, that's a I neat love place it. to visit. Neat place. Yeah. To visit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've never been and I'm looking forward to it, especially cause yeah, but well, you've got the Greeks and you've got the Turks. I mean, I love all of their food. So yep. <laughs> if nothing else, it's a great, nice fusion blend there on, yeah. on Cyprus for sure. There you so, go. I yeah, the book's coming out. Um, we will certainly make sure that that is included in, in the show notes uh, Great, for, for the podcast. But what about uh, are you are you still doing mentoring? Are you doing kind I of one on one? Are you yeah. building a community, or what's what's the kind of the status all of that? Yeah, all of the things. So I've got an online community, and the intention there is again just to be able to to work with people from all over the world, where you know time zones uh, can somewhat be managed through the power of zoom which is fantastic right. so yeah online community um, of again leaders and founders who are are looking not just to help and support and and pursue their own careers and ambitions but also contribute to a community so right. you know looking for people who are driven and ambitious but also who are very open and very willing and and wanting to contribute and help others on their own journey so we've got an, I've got an online community called the boardroom the entrepreneur boardroom for, for leaders who are interested in that. I do a select number of one-on-one um, executive um, and leadership coaching relationships mm-hmm. just because they do take up um, a lot of energy from both yep. sides. And I wanna make yep. sure I can give as much in, uh, as I can. Um, and then, yeah, and then just doing more sort of corporate workshops and events um, in person now that we can. It was interesting, you you mentioned earlier, you know, it took a while to kind of find your voice. And, and one thing you mentioned specifically was, um, I it took a while to figure out what I wanted to share, you know, a, about my history. I have a feeling that you had some restrictions on what you could share as well. So you were trying to, <laughs> yes. I, I can see this, this balance going on, you know, I would sure. love to share that, but can I, is this, is this in the list of things I can talk about versus yes. the list of things I can't talk about? So you said it well, and look, the agency is fantastic. They obviously get that people who once worked there need to be able to talk about their careers yeah. in some way. Um, and so there is just a process. You follow the process and you get clearance on what you can and can't say, and then you move on with your life. And, and similarly with the book, Obviously, I talked about, you know, working in war zones and my experiences with generals and presidents and all these other great things. Um, But 
they cleared it and you know they were very very amazing and reasonable about it and you know at the end of the day they they acknowledged that yes it's um it's 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 national security and it's we must take it very very seriously and it's you know a lifelong duty of mine to do the same um but there are things that we can share and right. and and what we can share we share and what we can't we don't so does that oath you swore when you first joined, the, does that, is that a lifelong thing or does that sure end is. when you walk out the door? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> no, it is forever and ever and ever and ever. I yeah. love it. Probably love multiple it. lifetimes too. <laughs> yeah. My children have absorbed exactly. it. That's a, it's, uh, it's interesting that, uh, you know, you're, you're so good at answering my questions. You're now answering them before I ask them, because oh. I was going to ask you, does this book have to be cleared? You know, did, did, yeah. Did the whole book have to be cleared before it did? It could yeah, go it live, did so. indeed. But yeah, like I said, it was a very straightforward and very, they were very supportive of, yeah. of it the whole time. And you were probably pretty cognizant of what you know you could and couldn't exactly. say, and, and yeah. know, as you were writing it. So, exactly, uh, I am. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a buy one, get one free from you today. So, you no know, I, we already asked you the just kind of how to find your voice, but I would really yeah. like to, to just kind of drill down let's let's step into like a mini mentoring session sure. here and as you're talking about founders that you know that like i said are further behind you on the journey just getting started or whatever what are two or three just you know pretty quick points that you think would be really helpful to somebody and things that you really wish you would have known when you kind of started you know think about the real estate you know yeah. business or whatever that would have been really helpful you know yeah. if I, I lost time i lost energy you know Anything that just really kind of some golden nuggets that you think are just, you know, two or three quick bullet points with some little sure. explanation that would really be helpful. You got it. Well, the first one, and this is true in all aspects of life, but particularly perhaps for earlier stage founders, when you are full of doubt and anxiety and uncertainty, is to very, very carefully curate your inputs. And by that, I mean... There are people we surround ourselves with, books we read, podcasts we listen to, uh, social circles that we're a part of, and they are all leaving an imprint. Some might leave a bigger one, some might leave a smaller one. But fundamentally, every input that we have in our lives has some sort of an effect. So particularly at points in your life when you are vulnerable or uncertain or unsure or anything, which is the life of an early stage founder and probably for the first few years, just be ruthless about protecting your headspace and your heart space by making sure you stop listening to negative news feeds or media, stop hanging around with people who are sort of Debbie Downers yeah, or draining negative, you. Right. draining you, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, and just try to, as much as you possibly can, immerse yourself in, and I'm not saying in like this naive Pollyanna sort of universe where everything is rainbows and ponies, but <laughs> you're going to want to be around people and ideas that are going to push you higher and push you forward instead of yanking you backwards or down. So do an inventory. And I very literally did an inventory of, um, you know, there's this great quote, you are the average of the five people you mm -hmm. spend the most time with. I literally in those early days of my first business now over 10 years ago, did an inventory. And it was a really depressing inventory, not because they were bad people, but because there was nothing in my immediate social circle that was going to help me achieve what I wanted to achieve. And so I very consciously then started going out, looking for networking events, looking for meetup groups, looking for or coming up with and creating my own communities where I would be surrounded by people who were smart, driven, you know, had values that were in alignment with mine and were in a similar boat as I was as far as caring about, you know, wanting to start their own business or, or actually doing it. And it makes all the difference in the yeah. world, Kevin, all the difference in the world. So that's one thing. Fundamentally, protect your headspace and your heart space right. and, and be ruthless about what you let in and what you keep out. And then secondly, and again, this is something that perhaps people don't appreciate, it genuinely does take 10 years to become an overnight success. So when you go into this, hopefully you will be the exception where you get that hockey stick growth, you know, in the first year or in whatever time scale seems comfortable for you. But sometimes you just got to wait. And that waiting is really tough because, and I will put my hand up, I'm the type of person who loves immediate gratification and wants everything to have happened yesterday, but you can't force it. You have to just, the way I put it is success takes time and it takes its own time. Mm. So 
you can want it tomorrow all you want, but there's nothing out there that is as invested in that time scale as you are. So do what you can do, control the controllable, all of that great stuff, and just persist because at some point that is the only difference between those who succeed and those who don't or those who keep talking about what they want to do is that persistence no matter how long it takes and so So let me ask you a quick question right before we're doing that so how do you know if you're persisting uh you're if you're riding a a dead horse (laughs) (laughs) so i mean i can i can ride that horse all day long but if he's slow and he's going the wrong direction then then all i'm doing is getting further away from my goal here that's a brilliant question. And again, that's where those people that you surround yourself with those ideas, those communities really, really come into their own and and Mm. prove their value is because when you are in those communities, that's where you start to get not the rules, but some of the benchmarks, some of the general parameters of what you can expect and what's normal and what's, you know, what's a bit of an outlier. And so because you're in a relevant community, they can say, well, okay, Kevin, yeah, you've been riding this horse, but you know, you think it's going to keel over and die, but actually it's just taking its time and regrouping and it's going to, you know, go galloping off into the sunset or whatever, Mm -hmm. (laughs) or Hey, Kev, you know, it sort of lost steam a couple of miles ago and, and you may as well get off and start walking. So I think <laughs> your that's horse really... lost a leg back then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I think really that's it. And, and, and while you are getting smart about your industry, your community, all of these things, whatever you, it is that you're building, you yourself will start to develop an intuition. You mm-hmm. yourself will start to see, okay, well, actually based on what I know now, this should be going a little bit differently or based on what I know now, actually, yeah, you're right. It's just taking a bit of time, but all of the signs are there. All of the the signals are there that this right. is going to turn into what I want. So it's That's just great. about keeping your eyes open and your brain open. Mm. This is, uh, I, I, I've done, I've done maybe 250 of these rising tide chats. And I think this may be the most information we have crammed into a 20 or 25 <laughs> minute space here. I mean, we did a two hour interview in about 25 minutes. And amazing. It, it is, it was truly amazing. And, ah. and you are, um, you really are gifted at answering questions with, with a lot of depth and, Thank you, you know, with a lot of context, you know, around Thank them you. as well. So we, our audiences, I, I highly encourage them to, uh, to listen to this and, and listen really well and take good notes because there's so much that, that is here to share. But as we're wrapping up today, what have we not touched on that uh, you'd just like to wrap us up with today? And, and then, uh, you know, just maybe where's the best place to, that people can find out more about you online? Uh, the easiest place is my website. It's just rupalypatel.com. Um, so there you can contact me. You can find out a bit more about what I do and how we can work together. So that's the best place to go first. Um, and then if I may just add one little sort of uh, final message or, or tip or note. For the, yeah, well, <laughs> oh, thanks. Okay. Um, I think what I would love for all of your listeners to know is that sometimes you will be your own best role model. I think so many times we look outside for, hey, how did this person do it? And how did that person do it? Oh, okay, well, maybe I should do it this way or I should do it that way. And that's great. They can be very, very informative and inspiring and all of that stuff. But hey, sometimes you're not going to find that person. You know, I, I come from, this is a strange example, but you know, I come from, from Staten Island, which is a, the, the less known um, sort of bastard child borough of New York City. <laughs> and uh, I always had this thing in my head, like, oh, people from Staten Island don't make it. Nobody from Staten, no one from this town is ever going to do anything important. And many of us carry these silly notions about right. what's possible for people, quote unquote, like us, right? Whether it's our families or our socioeconomic background or where we're from, the towns we're from, the countries we're from, all of these things. And, and we internalize them as if they're truths. And then if we don't see someone from the metaphorical Staten Island doing anything that we can identify with or want to do, we think, oh, well, it's, you know, it's not going to happen for me either. But you can be the one to break the mold. You Mm. can be the one to be the first from your town, your family, your country, whatever it is. And so just know that you have that power within you. It's but in order to, to tap into it, you do have to do some of the things I said earlier about just clearing all of the garbage Mm -hmm. from your head and from your heart and immersing yourself in the ideas and the people in the communities where what you want to do is the norm and they will push you to be better and prove to yourself that you can do anything. 
You know, it's not just the external influences and inputs. Sometimes it's the internal. Sometimes it's yeah. your own voice that is, is exactly. talking you out of it. And it's your yeah. own Debbie Downer. The, 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 I, <laughs> I, I can't it. do this, you know? So yeah. yeah, what a way to wrap up today, Rubel. Thank you so much for, for just taking time to, to share with our audience and such, such great information, such great depth and, and insights. And, and uh, I've, I've really enjoyed our chat. It's been great to connect with you to e-connect with you on uh, yes. online, but uh, just thank you for playing your part and just helping all boats rise in a rising tide. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Kevin. Another episode in the books. We hope you heard some great takeaways. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review on iTunes and YouTube. As always, thanks for listening to Rising Tide.